and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And in the news this week, a top college football player from Missouri has uh, come out uh, right before the NFL draft this spring. That has been news everywhere. That won't come as news to you. But we do have other news, uh, marriage news, all over the United States, starting with Kentucky uh, being ordered to recognize same-sex marriages legally performed in other states. And the fact that Nevada's Democratic Attorney General and Republican Governor have withdrawn from defending their state's ban on same-sex marriage. Attorney General Eric Holder, Attorney General of the U.S., spoke at a uh, human rights campaign big gala dinner in New York and made some comments, uh, some announcements about the Justice Department recognizing same-sex marriages. We think it's a little empty, but uh, we'll go over that. Not everything is about marriage. In Utah, LGBT activists got arrested outside the governor's office because they're trying to unblock the civil rights bill of protecting us on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity and expression. Tons of news from Russia and the Olympics. We'll try to walk you through it in a coherent way uh, so it all makes sense and is chronological. Uh, demonstrations uh, also held to protest anti-gay crackdowns in Uganda and Nigeria. Including a very moving protest in Kenya uh, by gay people there on behalf of gay Ugandans. That we'll we will show you. Yes. Uh, a United Nations committee really went after the Vatican over its cover-up of the abuse of children and also included very heavy criticism of the Vatican uh, for its homophobia. Uh, United Kingdom Channel 4 uh, telecast a documentary called Hunted about the literal hunting of gay people in Russia by vigilante gangs who were emboldened by these anti-gay laws of Putin. I'm wearing this scarf because it's freezing in this studio, but I'm warming up. See how so we I suffer for you? May take it off. Uh, Andy will review the latest farce from Charles Bush, the tribute artist, was, and... And the stage version of Sex Tips for Straight Women from a Gay Man, and uh, Billy Hayes himself in Riding the Midnight Express. And as several viewers have reminded us, when we lost our minds last week, America the Beautiful was written by Catherine Lee Bates, a lesbian and a socialist. Yes. But we'll start with Matthew Sam. Michael. Michael. Oh, sorry. My right. mistake. <laughs> See, I'm so caught up in Michael, Catherine well, uh, Lee Bates. Michael Sam has transformed this country overnight. Michael Sam, All-American. Uh, I had not heard of him, but he's a, he's a star player on the Missouri team who's the most valuable player. Voted the most valuable player on the team, took the team to the Cotton Bowl where they won, that kind of stuff. Well, and most importantly, I would tell you, uh, Defensive Player of the Year in the SEC, the Southeast Conference, yes. which is the conference in the United States. Yes. So. Uh, what he did was make a public announcement about being gay, which perhaps we should show them and then talk about it. Or, sure, yeah, let's show. Let's show. show about a minute and a half of Mike, Michael, I'm Michael Sam. Sam. Uh, I'm a I'm a football player and I'm gay. I came out to my team uh, this last uh, August. And coming out to them, they rallied around me, they supported me. I was like, I was kind of nervous. I was like, man, I'm actually doing it. But saying it and just how everyone's reaction was, was so like awesome. And I just, like, these are my teammates. These are my brothers. I can play for these guys. That's his third game. I mean, I was first team unanimous All-American. I was SEC Defensive Player of the Year. And just showing that an openly gay person on the team can have that much success with his teammates much there's a lot of opportunity for everyone i'm coming out because i want to own my truth uh two weeks ago at the senior bowl i didn't realize that how many people actually knew about my sexual orientation so i just want to own my truth before anyone breaks a story about me is this a huge deal i understand it is but my purpose and focus is right now is playing football 
I don't think I should be defined as Michael Sam, the gay athlete, the gay football player. I want to be defined Michael Sam for, for being a great person and have great character. You know, I probably may be the first, but I won't be the last. And I think only good things are going to come from this. We hope so. And, you know, what, he, what he's saying is, I want to put this in perspective in my life, you know, and get it out of the way and not make it this uh, Well, here's the thing. thing. The he, he is a very successful player. He is uh, predicted to go fairly high in the draft. He's considered a little small for his position. So there's some question about uh, how high he will go in the draft uh, because he may need to switch positions. But... but in working up to this, there were a lot of rumors about his sexual orientation, and scouts were beginning to ask his coaches. Does he got a girlfriend? Exactly. Evidently, they know enough not to ask, is he gay? So the code is, does he have a girlfriend? Are there girls around him? So then the decision was made by, his, by him, first of all, and by his agents, and then they brought in Howard Bragman, the... Uh, Hollywood agent and PR guy to plan who handles this a lot out. of people's coming out, yes. Shelley Wright, etc. Yeah, and Howard Bragman gathered all the past out gay retired players from history, and as well as <laughs> uh, Chris them. Cluey and some yeah, others yeah. Uh, to come and uh, sort of support him right have before dinner. he did this. They yeah, all yeah, had yeah. dinner at Howard's house. Yeah, uh, but, but, but Michael Sam is a very attractive guy, and there is, and he got immediate support from the NFL. Uh, the current commissioner, Roger Goodell, has a gay son, a uh, gay no. brother. The former commissioner, Paul Tagliabu, had a gay son. He was always pro Still has a gay son. Yes. <laughs> And, Drew. And a number of the teams uh, announced their support of him. I think he ought to go to the Seahawks. They have a very famous uh, defensive uh, line. That and a gay mayor. <laughs> Exactly. In Seattle. Yeah, so I think that'd be cool if he So, yeah, I mean, it's all going to help put it in perspective. There's, of course, rumbling from some players. Oh, I don't want them looking at me in the showers and all those idiots, you know, saying stupid things like this. But, but. Well, uh, mostly they said that before he came out. They were asked about, uh, you know, the standard gay player thing, and they said stuff like that. It's actually expected to be more of a problem from, like, the assistant coaches. The management side rather than the player's side. Yeah. Now, of, you know, he's famous at Missouri for basically p playing with controlled fury. I mean, he's a, he's quite a threat in the game. He's a, he's a very... He's a good player. He, he I mean, was the defensive player he, of the year in the SEC. He seems like this gentle giant, you know, when he sings during practice, literally sings the whole time. There's and charming the, video of him You online. have to go watch that. <laughs> yeah. But when the game starts, he is scary. Well, all football players are, you know, he's not alone well, in he's, that. He's one of the, he's one of the top yeah, ones. But though. I think he's uh, smaller and faster, and that would play well in now, Seattle. Now, you can read about him in the New York Times and other stories. He has a hell of a backstory in terms of a very shambolic family with a lot of violence in it, brothers who are dead, killed, prison, all this kind of stuff. He actually lived with another family in town uh, where he's from in Texas. Southeast Texas. And they, when he came out, they were totally accepting. His father, not so much. Well, he told his father in a text message the <laughs> night before he came out. Well, they don't get along. Dad, I no, am right. gay. They don't have a relationship. Hey, <laughs> No, they don't. His mother is like a Jehovah's Witness, and she didn't want him to play sports, period. But yep. he said, I needed sports this game to get me out of here. Exactly. Which is what a lot of people do with sports. Right. So congratulations, Michael Sam, and thank you. And I think he really will be a game changer, yep. you should excuse the expression, for the country as a whole, because it's not just like a politician or someone, or even a, an entertainer. This is the national religion, football. Yes. And, to, and it has been virulently homophobic or perceived that yeah. way. I mean, these, uh, a lot of support on paper from people. But this could really right. be a huge change. People need to understand, uh, among the major sports, uh, football, baseball, hockey, basketball, uh, other than um, the basketball player Jason uh, Collins, who, right. who just came out and hasn't been hired by anybody since he did that, yeah. uh, this would be the first one. Jason Collins has till March 1st to be uh, picked up by a team, but he's considered kind of uh, old and past his prime. Yeah. 
All right. Well, let's move on to marriage news because there's uh, there are big headlines there. Well, breaking news from Kentucky that yep. a federal judge has struck down uh, the ban on recognizing same sex marriages from other states. The judge says it's a violation of equal protection. Kentucky. Kentucky. <laughs> well, we've had Oklahoma, Utah, Kentucky. It's not uh, in effect quite yet. It still has to go through a legal process. But uh, were we stunned to open up our computers and find that Kentucky was the latest to we declare shouldn't. it? We shouldn't be anymore. And in Nevada, uh, the, the Attorney General, Catherine, oh, she's a Democrat, Catherine Cortez Masto, she said she won't defend the ban on same-sex marriage in court. And then the Republican governor, Brian Sandoval, said he agrees. <laughs> So there's no case, well, basically. Here, uh, no, there could be. There could be. Though. Well, here's the deal. This is Lambda's case. Uh, this is a Lambda case brought by couples in Nevada challenging the ban on same-sex marriage in Nevada. They lost at the court of original jurisdiction, the district court, and then the case is now on appeal in the Ninth Circuit. So uh, the attorney general, this Democrat, uh, filed an appeal, the state's version, that said, oh, you know, children, procreation, bestiality, whatever, uh, <laughs> you know, defending the, the Just state's let's throw law. throw things at the wall and see what sticks. Exactly. But the day she filed that, uh, that argument was the same day that the Ninth Circuit came down with its decision in the pharmaceutical company case that said you can't keep gay people off of juries just because they're right. gay, and that kind of decision has heightened scrutiny. Yes. You, you, we are more suspicious so, of decisions that involve gay people because they're gay. I think these fiscally prudent public <laughs> officials are saying, let's not waste any more money on something we're going to lose. Well, the, uh, whether it was money or not, the Attorney General of Nevada and the governor said, whoops, I guess we're not going to win on the basis of the appeal we filed. So, or uh, the actually the uh, the couples filed the appeal because they had lost. We're not going to win on our defense of this law. So we've decided to switch sides. Now we uh, believe that marriage uh, is legal, and uh, we're switching. So the only ones left in the Nevada case on that side are the right-wing interveners like the Prop 8 people in California. So they can continue, maybe they can continue to defend the law, but it's really about the Lambda clients with the appeal right. trying to overturn okay. the lower court, and then it probably won't go to the Supreme Court because uh, there's no one left on the right to defend it. So let's run down some of the other cases around the country in Missouri. I guess they want to keep Michael Sam in the state. The ACLU was planning to sue uh, over same-sex marriage. In Texas, two gay couples uh, are, are asking a federal court, they had, they believe, the hearing this week, uh, to overturn the constitutional amendment. In Idaho, the Supreme Court has cleared the way for uh, a gay guy to adopt his partner's kids. And two lesbians who were... who. Two lesbian couples who uh, who are about to give birth uh, uh, are allowed to have uh, second parent adoptions. In Wisconsin, oh, I'm sorry, the about to give birth is Ohio. Right. They the lesbians in Idaho have already given yeah, birth. In Ohio, four married gay couples are suing in federal court to have their marriages recognized on birth certificates. We're already recognized on a couple of death certificates there. Yeah, we're chipping uh, away. Although in that's Ohio. on appeal. Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin county clerks uh, who are being sued over the marriage ban there say, well, we agree with the plaintiffs. We want to file a, 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 you know, our opinion on their side. In Louisiana, a same-sex marriage lawsuit was filed. In Colorado, where the attorney general is a Republican and is defending the, the ban on same-sex marriage, the Democratic candidate for attorney general, Don Quick, says it should not be defended. In Indiana, we're waiting to see how the legislature plays out on the proposed constitutional amendment ban on same-sex marriage. The House... That uh, may have happened a, a year, by the time you are seeing this. Yes, but what happened was that a Senate committee that we know of passed the amended version, which if the full Senate goes along with that, means the vote would be postponed till 2016 at the earliest. This is the last stand of the National Organization for Marriage, and they are pouring resources in here because they want to get the old bill back that bans domestic... Par and they don't want a bill. The right wing is saying, we don't want this if it doesn't ban domestic partnerships as well. Absolutely. They used to say that they didn't care as long as they could ban marriage, but now they've come they, out of the closet on they, this. They 
the Indiana Family Institute posted on Facebook, I'd blow the shofar if I had one. Now is the time to act. <laughs> That's a direct quote from Facebook. Where is Steve Allen's horn when you need it? Uh, Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the United States, uh, was the main speaker at the Human Rights Campaign Big Gala Dinner in New York City this did last weekend. I did not. No, I don't I. go to things like that. <laughs> no, we don't go to things like that. And the big news they put out was that the Justice Department was going to fully recognize same-sex marriage for all benefits and Why wouldn't prison they? visits. It's, it's the law, isn't it, it? It was the law eight months ago, and they're just now getting around to making this announcement. I think this is all just a little exaggerated for the sake of looking like you have something to announce at the big HRC dinner. He did dinner. say that, that LGBT rights is a defining civil rights challenge of that our time. That was nice, That's yeah. nice. But then Bob Schieffer on Face the Nation, who is an idiot, uh, twice referred to gay spouses as partners, of course, and then he twice asked, this doesn't affect that many people, does it? I mean, this is his question. It doesn't, who cares if it affects two people, Bob? It affects everybody, by the way, because it's about justice, and that affects everybody, Bob. It was idiocy. I'm not but they make... don't know, you know, these guys don't know what to ask or what to say. <sighs> He gets the things in his head. Skip anything over here. Oh, Kansas. A House committee has passed a bill to let anyone who won't serve gay couples for religious reasons off the hook. This is like for a same-sex wedding or something. Uh, because, as we all know, God, God wants you to be mean to gay couples. Uh, well, similar legislation is advancing in Idaho and Tennessee, this is and I think several other places. This is where we are at the moment. This is going to this is going to be the civil rights battle of our time. It is, is individual religious people. I mean, they could also say, you know, I, I don't want to have anything to do with women in my place because it's distracting to men or something. I, whatever, you know, they can start saying religious reasons. Well, in fact, there is a, a small news item from Oklahoma of a guy who runs a restaurant who brags about the fact yes. that he keeps out gay people and he doesn't like disabled people and yes. he, uh, veterans, disabled veterans, and he doesn't like people of other uh, nationalities now, or races. Now, if we pass the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, he would be covered <laughs> in his little private bar there, but... The, uh, what do you mean he would be covered? He would, th they would, he would not be able to discriminate as, right. uh, you know, you'd have to be religiously affiliated. But we do have a very bad religious exemption in the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, which is why you don't see us pushing it here. And given how many people uh, get themselves ordained online yes. to perform marriages, I suspect that will be an out for these Absolutely. people who want to discriminate. Absolutely, very easy. Well, the, uh, the retribution that rained down from gay people in uh, Oklahoma against this restaurant owner who was so overt was that they uh, they all went on Yelp and designated his restaurant as the best gay bar in town. <laughs> yes, I know. That's cute. <laughs> I, I, I hope no gay people went there looking for that. I don't think his customers read Yelp too much. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, in Mississippi, yeah. uh, there there's a United States representative, Stephen Palazzo, who, when they had the big marriage ceremony at the Grammys, uh, took it upon himself to speak out and complain that uh, here in Mississippi we don't have Hollywood values like that and we hate all of this. I thought they were San Francisco values. Uh, there are Hollywood values, there are San Francisco values, take your pick. So some terrific local activists in Mississippi, we have a picture of them, marched down to Stephen's office delivering petitions saying, uh, excuse me, uh, we live here too, and you're supposed to be representing all the people of Mississippi, not just your little hateful uh, homophobic types. I'm surprised Vladimir Putin didn't reach in and stop that. <laughs> More and, later on well, him. We got some good news out of Montgomery County, Maryland, sort of. Uh, well, certainly in the first place. This is about the Boy Scouts. We got a picture of him there, Pascal Tessier, 17. He became, we believe, the, he's in the center there, w w the first uh, out gay Eagle Scout. He was active in helping gays come out and be out in the Scouts, and that's allowed. But when he turns 18 in August, he will be expelled from the program. And he said, this is a kind of a backhanded acceptance. It says to you, you're a monster of some sort. In other words, being an out gay 
uh, older person mm -hmm. is like being a, somebody who preys on children. And his mother said the same thing and said, what no one really wants to talk about is the suggestion that gay adults are child abusers, and that is infuriating his mother said. So we've really got, and the scouts are not off the hook on this one by any means. Absolutely Audie not. Audie is the first out gay Eagle Scout. And uh, just stunning that they can award him that one day and then turn around the next and uh, essentially well, accuse him of being a potential child We all know molester. what happens when you turn 18. Oh, God. I mean, what, it's idiotic. Yes, it is. Uh, now, there was a case in New York of a uh, couple of gay men on New Year's Day who were attacked on the streets. One of these cases where words are exchanged back and forth, uh, these uh, guys hurling homophobic slurs, it turns into a fight. We're going to put their pi pictures up of the, of the suspects of, of the perpetrators. This occurred at First Avenue and 15th Street. So take a good look at these guys, and if you know them, uh, please call 1-800-577-TIPS. Um, it was a 27-year-old gay man who suffered bruises to the head. Uh, and so if you recognize them, please call the police. You can go to the Anti-Violence Project website for more information about this, avp.org. Uh, now, good news from North Carolina. <laughs> There's a young man, Blake Brockington, uh, 17 years old, transgender man, who has been elected the homecoming king there he is. at East Mecklenburg High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, this election was not a popularity contest. To get elected homecoming king, you have to raise more money from, for charity than the other candidates. And the candidates were raising money for an organization called Mothering Across Continents uh, that build schools in South Sudan. He raised $2,335.55. All the other candidates combined raised $868. So he raised uh, <laughs> three times. We, we, you know, that's how we <laughs> prove ourselves. We have to be better than everybody. In order well, to congratulations do it. to Blake. He, by the way, not unlike Michael Sam, had been rejected by his father. He ended up with foster parents who raised him very lovingly. And he is popular with his classmates. And he is the homecoming king of uh, uh, East Mecklenburg High School. And we'll find out how popular a couple of out gay people are in North Carolina in terms of uh, running for office. We told you that Clay Aiken was running for Congress there. He responded to a question, though, on same-sex marriage by saying, it's a settled issue in North Carolina. Yeah. I Meaning mean, no. Yeah. So wh what's your position? And what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And then, but in uh, District 12, a guy named Marcus Brandon mm -hmm. seeks to become the first out African American congressman. Uh, he is a member of the General Assembly out of Greensboro. He's a popular guy. And at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, there is an out gay, undocumented immigrant. Uh, from Guatemala, who is in the runoff for student body president. He, uh, he finished at the top of the voting, but didn't have quite a majority, so they're having a runoff. But uh, that's quite the news on campus, too. On the other hand, in Michigan, they can't outdo themselves with anti-gay stuff. We told you about, about a guy named David Gemma, who was, the, who was the delegate to the Republican National Committee, so, so anti-gay that the head of the Republican Party wants him out. And when Reince Priebus wants you out. Yes. So the, but, so the woman who was the delegate to the committee, she's embarrassed by this guy because she's yeah. running for office. Yeah. So she withdraws. And who steps up but a guy who's worse than a Gemma, a woman named Mary Helen Sears, who thinks that homosexuality is a satanic perversion and says this publicly. It's um, not helpful to your party, but that's fine with me. <laughs> hey, and, you know, we forgot to mention that there's a lot of, you know, we're, keeping up the pressure to get an executive order out of Obama yep. on, on uh, contractors to cover sexual orientation and gender identity expression. He won't do it, but Harry Reid said he supports that executive order this oh, week. Oh, yeah. Uh, and there was a little scandal because the Labor Department Ooh. secretary was uh, at a veterans hiring event. and Tom there was, Perez. There was a reporter from BuzzFeed there who wanted to talk to him about the executive order, but also, maybe even more importantly, about whether the Labor Department is enforcing a decision by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission that transgender people are covered by 
uh, sex discrimination yes. rules and 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 he the, can't get an answer out of the department for a year yeah to find out whether they're enforcing this EEOC order this is a question <coughs> that has been in the air for ages about uh, you know the decision was great but is anyone enforcing it and uh, the federal government won't talk so this reporter says all right I see the Labor Department secretary is at this event I'm gonna go ask him directly oh. and the goons of the Labor Department keep him out of the event and won't let him talk to the Labor Department secretary. They said, oh, uh, there's only talk about uh, veterans issues, I think, was yes, the issue. The well, like, we're not veterans. <laughs> we and, are now. And like there's no, uh, you know, free speech uh, at the Labor Department secretary's appearance. Well, speaking of veterans, the Pentagon is saying, we don't need any new laws to convert dishonorable discharges of gays and lesbians to honorable don't mu fuss with this in the Congress. Uh, we can there's deal proposed legislation. We can deal with yeah. it. We will do it. Well, it's taken Eric Holder eight months to say the government's going to treat same-sex married <laughs> couples uh, equally. I, I bet you they all went wild at the HRC dinner. You think you're getting something. It's something you already have. Or should have had. <laughs> and the Defense Department does, you know, kind of agree with this, but they are kind of dragging their heels doing anything about it. So that's why the proposed legislation exists. But maybe that will move them along a little faster. But what they really want to know is, who were the gays and lesbians and transgenders who went to the White House for the dinner for President Hollande? Do they? <laughs> sure they do. <laughs> well, big news, Edie Windsor, you know, who got us all our marriage rights. It's the least she deserves. She got to bring her new girlfriend, and good for her at 85 having a new girlfriend. That's true. Uh, and uh, she 85? I thought she was only about 83. 85. Okay. And uh, the guests included Roberta Kaplan, and who was the lawyer for her Edie. Lawyer. And her, uh, uh, I don't know, are they married? Rachel Levine is her, certainly... I don't want to make a mistake about their relationship, but they're together. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, congratulations to the activists in Utah who, taking a uh, cue from the activists in Idaho who did the same thing, blocked access to the governor's office and the uh, state senate demanding passage of non-discrimination bills that would uh, cover sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. Thirteen were arrested. Here's what the Utah legislature has said. We're not do dealing with any gay stuff till we get this marriage thing cleared up. Oh, come on. Yes. You know, yes. The, the, no gay legislation. The Mormon and church <laughs> was got such an anti-gay reputation on the marriage thing that they stepped aside and they stopped fighting local ordinances yeah. uh, on gay rights. Yeah, yeah. Why would they not want the state to have one? I'm just telling you what the legislature said. And the legislature I, itself Well, I thought the Mormon is, church was uh, in charge. Uh, well, you'd think so. But in fact, as with other legislatures, they tend to be more conservative than uh, the outside groups. But the uh, capital is right there in Salt Lake City, in the big city. In New York, we got to go up to Albany if we want to lobby them. Oh, please. Uh, we're continuing to advocate around the St. Patrick's Day Parade here in New York City. We will give you updates as we have them. More and more people have signed on to the petition to get the uniformed services, uh, cops, fire, sanitation out of the homophobic, bigoted, uh, religious St. Patrick's Day Parade. The mayor they can, they can yes. you know, march if they want, but Just, not in uniform. Uh, and this week... The LGBT, uh, a minister in Ireland uh, said she's not, she's coming here, but mm -hmm. she's not going to march. So the LGBT groups over in Ireland are saying they don't want the prime minister to march either. And he's saying uh, he doesn't, you know, he's even though they're relatively pro-gay in the government, he's not doing that. Well, uh, what they say is maybe he'll show up. Maybe the best thing is to show up and march and talk to the leaders yeah. of the New York parade you, about this. I've talked to them. You well, try it. I, I'm saying once he talks to them, he may decide to step out of the parade. It really strikes me that any public official in New York will easily criticize what Putin is doing and Russia and all this kind of stuff over gay stuff, and they won't attack people at home who are religious bigots. And voters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, a terrible story out of Texas, uh, Hale Center, Texas. A 16-year-old girl, Sierra Wood, who is an out bisexual, was in class, and the teacher yes. asks the class, 
Uh, so what change, what would you like to see change in the world if you could? And she gets up and says, uh, I would like marriage equality for same-sex couples. The teacher goes on a homophobic rant, tells her she's uh, horrible, and throws her out of class. Suspe then she gets suspended. Wait a minute. She goes, she's thrown out of class. She goes out into the hallway. She passes another student and says, you know, sup. sup. That's is considered gang talk. And sup. That's what gets her suspended. Well, this gang is why, talk. This is why I don't say sup on this show. So she is, I'm not throwing you out. So she is suspended. She goes home. She sp uh, serves her suspension. But meanwhile, she's getting uh, gay bashed online and, and attacked and all sorts of stuff. She's bisexual. So her older s sister doesn't want her to go back to the school uh, and continue to be attacked uh, by teachers, by classmates, whatever. The older sister is now facing a jail term for not forcing hey. her younger sister to go hey. back to this school. Whew. It's what is ugly this? out what there. What is this, Russia? <laughs> and a report from the Williams Institute says 21% uh, of all LGBT families or households are receiving food stamps. 43% of those households that have kids. Uh, and there was you know, so much for the affluent. Uh, and I skipped over a poll of U.S. Catholics that says they support same-sex marriage now, 54 to 40. I don't yes. think their leaders have gotten the message. No. So with all that, let's go to Russia. And yes. uh, take us through it, Anne. All right. You're I'll, on top of all I this. I will try to do this, as you may have noticed, uh, <laughs> or maybe not, because maybe you're not watching. I find it's hard to watch much of it, but I tune in occasionally I, I to the Olympics. I am boycotting the Olympics. Uh, I find they're just not very compelling. Well, I'm just, you know. Uh, some people find it them It makes so. me sick to think about what's going on in that country. Absolutely. So I, it would be hard to enjoy. Well, so they started off on what looked like a promising note. The first night, Bob Costas, before his eyes got really bad, sat down with uh, David Remnick, who the, I've n rarely seen since. Of the New Yorker, who, and, who was an old Russia hand, and, used and, to live there and write about it. An old Russian, Vladimir Posner, who remember you him? may remember sure I do. from the old days and uh, Costa says to Posner so what about this uh, what's going on with the uh, gays and people in Russia and Posner says oh it's terrible <laughs> this is a very homophobic country yes it is I have friends who have considered suicide uh, and uh, it's only going to get worse after the Olympics. <laughs> That's exactly right. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, a NBC is really on top of this. This is great. We have succeeded. We've uh, forced them to pay attention. This could really be good. Well, that was about it for uh, coverage of gay stuff on NBC. It pretty much disappeared after that. Yes, because now the games have started. We've got to, you know, enjoy, you know, it's about the sports and about the athletes. You barely hear about the things like the bobsledder kick, having to kick down the bathroom door. That gets mentioned because it's funny, but uh, right. all the problems, all the ecological problems, the corruption, none of that. It's all Brigadoon. It's all the fantasy. It's all, oh, the pretty uniforms, all the... Whatever. Opening ceremonies. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't show the Russian police chorus singing Get Lucky. <laughs> that became very popular online. Viral. Uh, that was a rehearsal. That was painful to watch. You watch these Russian cops who you know are out there beating up gay people and they're out there singing a daft punk song that was a hit at the Grammys about getting lucky, staying up late to get lucky. Uh, that was painful. Uh, they did honor a lot of uh, Russian gay people, Tchaikovsky, Gogol, uh, Nijinsky, all of that. They had, you know, people in rainbow uniforms and rainbow seats, none of which was deliberate. Um, I didn't there watch was, it. There was controversy about the head of the IOC, Thomas Bach, and his speech because NBC uh, cut it. For time, yeah. and people said, "Oh, they censored his uh, speech about the mm. wonders of uh, you know everybody working together." I did not read his speech that way. I, I saw it. I saw the truncated version they broadcast. Yes. I read the whole thing. He talked in general terms about people getting along and everybody working together and no discrimination. But then he said uh, that. Uh, countries should have the courage to address your disagreements in a peaceful way, not on the backs of these athletes. That's what he said right before the Olympics, too. 
He said it at the opening ceremonies, and I thought that is a direct slap at Obama and all the European leaders who have criticized uh, Putin, not sent their leaders to the game, sent gay athletes to make a point, which Obama said in an interview with Costas that he had deliberately done. That is Bach doing that. And if you have any question about that, you have only to look at his reaction to something else. On the first day of the games, uh, there were demonstrations uh, around Russia as well as around the world. Many, many cities, St. Petersburg, Moscow, and people arrested in those demonstrations. Oh, NBC, of course. You can yes, roll, roll yes. The roll it's the it's Moscow tape. Roll. So, yep, there they are. And so, these, these are a dozen demonstrators in Moscow getting arrested just for going out in the street and holding up a rainbow flag. They, they got arrested. Oh, they were singing the national anthem of Russia too. They got hauled off to jail where they were beaten in Sex, jail. Sexually harassed. Harassed, yes. Uh, you the know, word. come. Go suck me or yeah, something, that exactly. kind of stuff. Uh, none of that on NBC. So the head of the IOC is asked about these arrests, and his answer is It's in, it's in, it's in uh, sync with Russian law. Uh, they didn't have a permit. I, I am under the impression that in most countries you must get permission to hold a demonstration. Not in this country. Oh my Most of the God! Time. So, uh, so that's how things are going now. By Permission contrast, to hold a demonstration. The UN Secretary Ban Ki Moon, who has been a wonderful supporter of gay people and people with AIDS for years, uh, spoke at an IOC meeting just before the games begin. He said, "We must all raise our voices against attacks on LGBT and intersex people." We must oppose the arrests, imprisonment, and discriminatory restrictions they face. That is a statement, a courageous and wonderful statement. Mm -hmm. uh, UN Ambassador, U.S. At UN Ambassador Samantha Power met with the uh, ex-Pussy Riot members uh, when they came to New York, called them brave troublemakers. That was terrific. But mostly, uh, oh, and, you know, I, I guess I have to give a uh, little credit to Budweiser, which canceled its Club Bud in Sochi. Uh, they usually throw a big party there. They canceled it because all of this is such a mess. Uh, and then you have Chevy and Coke running these uh, ads with gay people in them during the NBC coverage, thinking that's... Uh, enough but the out gay athletes are not doing much there was one um not gay but supportive snowboarder who had a picture of pussy riot on his uh, snowboard but generally the out gay athletes have been saying oh i'm i'm not political there's no problem i'm fine but after she won the bronze medal uh in uh, the uh what is it speed skating the speed skating uh yeah this uh, bisexual uh, Holland, uh, Irene Wust, is that how you say her name? Wust, probably. She's at, a, she's at a party where Putin is hanging out. Yep. And she cuddles with him. Yeah. And co provides cover for him at the Holland Heineken house. Yeah. Can't have a gay house, you can have a beer house. Mm. So uh, we had a demonstration here outside the Russian consulate. When we say we, me, we mean us, <laughs> us among others. And hundred others. people. Yeah, it was good. And uh, you will see me, identifiable by, of course, the hair and my earmuffs, pouring fake vampire blood on the Olympic oh, flag. Oh, why did you tell him it was fake blood? All over the Olympic flag. <laughs> it, it looks like a Pollock, but it was a very striking image. This was right in front of the Russian consulate, folks. And uh, a, a lot of people turned out in very cold weather uh, to make... Uh, you know, known that you know that we're not going away on this issue. That's a, a, a member, a leader of Rusa LGBT, their uh, gay organization, and this video is actually the Russian TV coverage of the uh, demonstration. We're actually not showing it to you all sound up because most of it is in Russian. But there we are parading. Uh, gay bashing is not on an Olympic sport was the main slogan for that. Uh, so we had a good demonstration. Yes, that's enough. That's, that's, that's yeah, enough of that. Queer nation. Because at the what we're consulate. hearing from Russian LGBT activists is that they are terrified about what's going to happen after the Olympics. Right. Um, uh, three in, you know, what they did in St. Petersburg to get arrested was, uh, it, all it said was, any form of discrimination is incompatible with the Olympics. And for this, you Wham, get arrested. They're, they're arrested snatched for that, off the streets. For arrested.
And again, no mention of this on NBC, no mention of this uh, really uh, in the world press beyond small stuff here and there. Now, the anti-gay Americans like Larry Croft of Rochester were allowed to preach on the street in downtown Sochi, uh, but they did have to uh, put their banner away, even though it said, God bless Putin for his stance on homosexuality. But they were But you not can't use that word. Uh, they were not arrested. That's correct. They were not beaten. They were not uh, told to leave the streets. Well, they were there because they at are, the Sochi because train station. Holding traditional values. Uh, now, what about what about uh, a, uh, a, uh, a famous Russian author has been questioned by the cops because and accused of uh, breaking the propaganda law because uh, she donated a book to the library. Oh, yes. That uh, had gay people it. It was about family diversity, and yeah. it included gay stuff. But they said, this leads to gay sex. Uh, the group Blondie refused to play in Sochi. Thank you to them. Uh, I, and a member of the European Parliament, Michael Cashman, cut up his visa card in the middle of a session, uh, got up to give a speech and said, not in my name, and cut up his visa card. Full disclosure. I haven't done that yet, okay? <laughs> it's very hard changing cards, but God bless them. Uh, Chobani, the yogurt company that's having trouble getting into Russia, <laughs> put up a, a picture of uh, sort of rainbow Chobani. Do you think I should get rid of my card? And... I don't know. All right. Uh, and the gay games are in Cleveland in uh, August this year. They did a 30-second TV spot and ran it during the opening ceremonies of the Olympics in uh, cities around Ohio. Okay. It's a really good spot. So and then uh, Google, Google gave us a lot of support around the world. We got a picture of this. Around the world, they put up rainbow sports, and then they had a big statement at the bottom supporting non-discrimination. And this was what you saw, whether you were in Iran or Russia or any place else. It was their Google Doodle for the uh, yes, it was. for the day, and you know there are empty seats at the Olympics. Uh, things are still going wrong. Uh, it's well. Uh, uh, then in but in Toronto, you can always count on Mayor Rob Ford. You know, all the one with all the drug trouble. Mm -hmm. He demanded that the rainbow flag be, which was up there uh, because of the Sochi Olympics be taken down. I don't think they did, though. Um, and he said he would never attend Toronto's Pride Festival. The mayor of Toronto, which used to be a cosmopolitan city. <laughs> well, he's kind of a it, right winger. Kind of, well, it's kind of embraced a lot of uh, right wing suburbs. It's yeah. been folded into the city. And that's why you got Mayor Rob Ford. And in Atlanta, Georgia, a group of gay activists went to Including Centennial. the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. They went to Centennial Park, where the Atlanta Olympics were held a few years ago. Just to do a little, uh, there they are. Uh, where, what did they call it? Love, hope, and solidarity vigil for Russian LGBTs. Coca-Cola has a, an office there. They kicked them out of the park. Yep. Uh, no statement about whether they have the right to do that. But they, if this they're is nice a peaceful... Ed, if they're their nice ad in the Super Bowl where they, where they slipped us in for one, one second. And an expanded version in the Olympics. But they kicked these peaceful positive demonstrators they weren't dem they said nothing about coke it wasn't about coke they were just pro lgbt russians and they got kicked out of the park by chevrolet coke. did a, a couple of nice family yes. diversity ads yes uh and stoli still attempting to resurrect their uh, reputation gave one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to this russia freedom fund which we're still, uh, this is the Arcus Foundation, All Out, uh, HRC, Melissa Etheridge. We hope this money they're raising is actually going to get to LGBT Russians. We're a little unclear about how that's actually going to happen because there are laws in Russia against foreign donations and all of that. Uh, but Stoli gave 150000 to them, well, to the Russian Freedom Fund, after giving 300000 to the L.A. Right. LGBT Center. So uh, the gay bar in Chicago that had been boycotting Stoli well, let them back in. If, if you are enjoying the, the Olympics, I'd like to spoil it for you, because uh, you need to see this documentary that was produced by the United Kingdom's Channel 4. Now, yes. it, was, uh, it was on YouTube. They've taken it down there. You got to go to their website. Try to find this. It's called Hunted, and this is a correspondent 
who went out with these vigilante, neo-Nazi vigilante groups, which lure gay people in and then torture them. And they're happy to show it. Then they post their videos online and the gay person has to leave town because he is disgraced yeah. and has to, has to get out. And, and his family disowns amused. him. They're, uh, very, they're just chuckling through the whole thing. It is so sickening, but it's the kind of thing we need to face in terms of dealing with, and the, here's, the, the, here's the problem. We have anti horrible anti-gay bigots like that here, but uh, they get prosecuted if you find out what they've done, generally, in, the, in our day and age. Terrible. Yeah, all right. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Obama's named another out uh, lesbian delegate to uh, the uh, U.S. official uh, delegation to the Paralympics, which follow the Olympics always uh, in the same facilities a week or two later. Uh, Kathleen Martinez, uh, Assistant Secretary for Disability Employment Policy at the Department of Labor. We're back to them. And finally, the gay bar in Sochi that we've heard about says, please, leave us alone. We're sick of you. Come on. Uh, uh, if you keep publicizing us, because everybody's going there to say there are gay people in Sochi, uh, we're not going to be able to stay here. We're going to have to leave town. And P.S., one of our patrons was assaulted by a cab driver who picked him up who realized that he was gay. Right. All, right. All right. Other international news. Well... Uh, there was a, a big expose in the New York Times th this week about the horrible situation in Nigeria. Yeah. And we've got a picture of this is in the courtroom. They take out a lash and whip you 20 times or whatever it's called for, for being gay. And this person, this guy was happy to demonstrate it uh, for the photographer. This is what is going on there. This is especially in the North where Sharia law is in force. But a lot of this has been stepped up because the president of Nigeria, good luck, Jonathan, that's his name, uh, signed an anti-gay bill into law. So, there will be a global day of action uh, against uh, what's happening in, in Nigeria. March, right? March 7th, in the middle of the day, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., wherever you are. Uh, check out, uh, you know, Google this or check out Facebook for the Nigeria Global Day of Action. It would be a good idea to because, show up Because this week we had a Global Day of Action on Uganda. Yeah. Because, you get, because President Museveni there is cogitating about whether to sign the anti-gay bill. And he's enjoying the attention that it gets him because he doesn't normally get a lot of attention. So uh, there's so a lot of speculation of how he's going to go on this. He actually, I, I have to give him credit for having delayed this for a long time uh, in Parliament. But then the uh, ultra right wing just went ahead and passed it without a quorum. He's very concerned about what the world is going to do to him. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa and is really oil rich and more independent. Uganda really will be in trouble if uh, other countries start punishing them. For so this. I was covering the small action that took place at the Uganda House, which has now taken its name down in New York. They used to have has it, in, it? Yes, they used to have oh. it in big letters there, Uganda House. They've taken it down. Yeah. So uh, p people like Northrop here are demonstrating and shouting at people as they're coming out uh, of the um, Uganda House. And they don't want to talk to me as a reporter, but one guy does. He says, uh, they think I'm Ugandan. I'm the UN ambassador to the South Sudan. I said, really? What's the situation for gays like there? He says, the problem has not arisen. <laughs> that was his quote. Uh, Watch but out. It's very, it's very, it, but in Uganda, as in Nigeria, because you have these laws or pass these laws, whether or not you sign them, it steps up anti-gay activity, violence, all those kinds of things. And that's what we need to stop. So the most, I have to say, the most moving thing I've seen this week was video of a demonstration held in Nairobi, Kenya, on behalf of uh, LGBT Ugandans on this Worldwide Day of Action. Uh, for Uganda. We were at this small demo, but this is what happened in Nairobi uh, on behalf of Uganda. They sung. Placards in hand, chanting slogans. They strutted their stuff. Faces masked, albeit to conceal their identity. They congregated outside the Uganda High Commission, hoping to get audience with the Ugandan High Commissioner to Kenya. 
but they were not accorded that request. So instead, they chose to picket outside in solidarity with their Ugandan brothers. Their concern? This bill has major repercussions to human rights conditions across the East African community. And actually most of us are here because we are members of the ESC. And we are concerned about uh, the fundamental freedoms such as association, equality and privacy that are going to be affected once this bill comes into law. Already the effects of the bill can be felt. Uh, gays and lesbians are crossing the border and seeking asylum in Kenya. There's an increasing number of LGBT migrants in Kakuma camp. We are appealing to Uhuru Kenyatta to talk to Museveni because a lot of gay people are being persecuted in Uganda and it's the, it's the high time we also need to. The people who are persecuting people actually are the ones who are need, need to be taken to Hague. For them, their wish is to be accepted as normal part of society. Homosexuals are not sick people, they are not abnormal as he calls them, uh, relating them to albinos, and um, he, they, they are not people who need to be repatriated or rehabilitated back to society. Look, I've been an activist for 40 years. I've never done anything as brave as that, to stand there and do that in that country. Uh, so please turn out on March 7th on behalf of Nigerian LGBTs. By the way, I have a quick update, the beauty of the iPad. The Secretary of Labor here <laughs> has uh, uh, announced that, yes, they're not protecting uh, transgender workers, but it's under review. <laughs> A year later. Yeah. Uh, by the way, 98% of Nigerians uh, do not believe society should accept homosexuality. That's a hell of a poll. Uh, uh, two more than 200 scientists, therapists, psychiatrists signed a letter to the Ugandan president uh, to declare that homosexuality is a natural condition uh, because he's conditioned his uh, decision on the bill, supposedly. On and uh, 500 rabbis, uh, a letter was delivered to them uh, by the American uh, Jewish World uh, uh, Service, and our old friend Ruth Messenger was behind that. 500 rabbis. Uh, to, in a letter to Museveni on this. Uh, in Albania, they have scheduled the first Pride Parade for May 17th. In we'll Tirana, see, yep. We'll see whether they pull that off. The out gay U.S. ambassador to the Dominican Republic, Wally Brewster, is not shying away from being out there with his partner. He, they got themselves on the cover of the Dominican High Society magazine, and they also brought in LGBT activists from the Dominican Republic for a big public meeting. And Cyprus is planning to hold its first pride parade in Nicosia in May. In Iran, four soccer players on the national women's team were banned because they are men, awaiting gender reassignment surgery, and they are told that they will be allowed back after surgery. That's always the question. Do you do it by what the uh, gender in which they're living their daily life, or do you impose things like surgery? The United Nations Committee on the... Uh, uh, um, on uh, the of the child, uh, what is it called? On the interests of the, what is it of the child? Child, whatever. I'm sorry. Um, uh, has is issued a report on the Vatican, uh, is calling on them to remove all child abusers in their ranks, report them to law enforcement, open the archives so that bishops and others who concealed the crimes can be held accountable. None of them have. So the Vatican says, oh, we've done, already done a lot, about it, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of this. How Never many bishops mind. are in jail? We've and, done it. And the Vatican also says, we're not responsible for priests and bishops around the world, just in Vatican City. Well, you got a big guy there named <laughs> Benedict who did this. <laughs> Give him up. <laughs> He's in uh, isolation at the moment. He's in Vatican City. All Give right. him up. AIDS news? Sure. Okay. Uh, the uh, Centers for Disease Control at uh, activist request will modify its uh, statements about unprotected sex. They will now refer specifically to sex without condoms or things like uh, suppressed viral load, which could also be considered uh, safe sex. So they're cleaning up their language. Horrible tug of war going on in Louisiana where hundreds of people with HIV AIDS are getting their checks refused for their Obamacare under Blue Cross Blue Shield because it's a dispute over federal subsidies and rules over fraud and all this kind of stuff. Blue so Cross Blue Shield says that uh, there can be no third party payments of premiums, but often uh, premiums are paid by AIDS organizations. Ryan White and all that kind of stuff. Lambda is challenging this. And a big report out from the CDC about something we've talked about often, which is why African Americans, who are 14% of the population, constitute 44% of new infections. 
and half of the people living with AIDS in the United States. Um, and it's because only a third of them have viral suppression, right. where they're taking the drugs enough to keep the virus repressed. It, so th but they think they can turn this around if they focus well, sure. on what they need to do. Well, it continues to be fear of stigma that keeps people away from testing and treatment and adhering to treatment and all of that. All right. Play reviews. I hate everything, but I liked <laughs> Billy Hayes in uh, writing the Midnight Express. It's it's Billy himself. Talks about his escape from the Turkish prison in 1975. It was the hit movie with Brad Davis. Uh, it was a good movie, but I think the truth makes a better story. It's a different Always. story. It's a Always. different story. Yeah. Uh, even though we know how it turns out, he really does a terrific job there at the St. It Luke's must be Theater. amazing to see him in person talking He's about it. He's in his it. 60s now. He's very fit. He's very into Zen, which is what he got into in prison. Mm -hmm. That's how he got through this. Mm -hmm. But when you hear how he got out, it's uh, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Uh, we saw the Tribute Artist, which is the new Charles Bush, Julie Halston vehicle. Well, we I saw half of it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got this crazy, you know, if you know Charles... It's, it's farce. It's farce. If you're a Charles Bush fan, you're going to love yeah. it. Uh, convoluted plot, but I, it really could have been condensed a little bit, uh, I think. Uh, it and really it no need for two hours. Yeah. Uh, you know, it. it's mildly amusing, but I really thought, what's the point? Yes. And then I did see Sex Tips for Straight Women from a Gay Man, which is based on a book that was very popular, but the play was written by a straight guy. I don't want to say anything about uh, But it, all this thing... Some of our best friends. This is sort of... This is sort of... Uh, for bachelorette parties, basically, I think. Well, it's that was true. It's not for true. us. Uh, but it does prove that Naked Burlesque, boys singing. Yeah, yes, yes, that's what happened with that. Yeah. Although that was, that was much better. This sort of proves that burlesque is not dead. And we do thank the viewers who jogged our memories to let us know that it was uh, Catherine Lee Bates who wrote America the Beautiful, because we did sort of blank out on that uh, last week. Yes, that was the song that they were using in the Coke commercial, and they were singing in foreign languages, which upset the right wing very much. <laughs> So, <laughs> so we're paying attention to the Olympics. We're continuing to do demonstrations. I suspect we're exhausted. We are exhausted. We, we have, have to go to two meetings tonight <laughs> about Russia and about the St. Patrick's Day parade. But uh, we do need to keep up the pressure on Russia. That yes. once the Olympics are over, we have to keep going. If you have any particular ideas about that, uh, do let us know. Uh, because we need to keep this invigorated. We really we, ought to, well, you're having a meeting tonight, but I think, I hope we schedule something fairly soon afterwards, after the Olympics, to show that we're not abandoning our Russian LGBT brothers and sisters. Absolutely not. Or those in Nigeria, or those in Uganda. There's, yeah. a lot, there's, a lot to, there's a lot to work on. But there's a lot you can do, too, and we'll keep you informed of what people are doing all over the world. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, and if you want to be on our email list, write to me at andyhamadaol.com.